today we're going to be looking at how to do these 2D animated face rigs. Now I've done a previous popular tutorial on this, but this time we're going to make it better with animatable controls. In fact, this will be utilizing my free face textures, which I'll talk about where to get at the end of this video. First thing I'm going to do is come up here to import using the images as planes add on, and I'm going to go ahead and import my facial textures. Now you want these to be set up as a sequence so that they read off in a numbered order. Also, I'm going to start with just doing the eyes. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab all the facial textures that I wanna import. And over here, you'll notice a lot of settings. And what we wanna do is animated image sequence. And this will ensure that it puts it all into one node for us. So let's go ahead there, hit import images as planes. Now I'm gonna go ahead and rotate this 90 degrees so that it is facing the camera and hit control and A, and apply the rotation and scale so that all of that is zeroed out perfectly. Visual effects play a large role in creative products, but they're time consuming, render intensive, and difficult to control. Dynamic Visual Effects Pack aims to solve all that. With over 25 visual effects assets, you can drag and drop into your scene with easy to use exposed controls. Annotated graphs to help you learn and customize further. And the best part is nearly everything renders super fast in either Eevee or Cycles. Let's dive in and take a look at how some of these can help save you time. Now, what we're gonna go ahead and do is open the shader panel. So we'll come over here, go to the shader editor here, and you'll see that we have our PNG set up here. Now, first of all, I don't want this 2D image texture to be capturing too much lighting. So I'm actually gonna turn the specular down to 2.5 and the roughness up to one, and that'll just give me a little bit of a flatter look while still taking some lighting. Now, what we're going to be playing with is this offset value here that will allow us to offset through the frame. So let's go ahead, set that back to zero. I'm gonna set this to cyclic just so that we can kind of see that as it is progressing. And what we're going to go ahead and do is add a controller that will control this offset value. Great, so how do we go about doing that? Let's create an armature first. Name this just single bone there. We're gonna name this face rig. And then we're going to move this and make sure you're in object mode. We're going just to put this off to the side here. It's very important that you do not adjust the pose mode because we're going to be using that as our driver. So now what we wanna do is switch into pose mode after you've placed it. We're going to switch to local mode here, turn on our gizmo, and we're going to pick the direction we wanna go. In my case, I wanna go up and down, so I'm going to pick the Y direction. So we're gonna come up here to the Y location. And we're going to copy as a new driver. Now what we're going to do is tap back out into object mode, grab our face here, and we're going to paste that driver into that offset value. Now, when we grab this, we'll see that we can actually begin moving through. However, this could definitely be improved. So let's look at what we could do. We're going to come over here to the shader editor and we're going to drag this up. We're going to open a driver menu here. Now we're going to grab the face texture and we need to come up here and make sure we have that texture selected in the node there. Come down here, grab this once it's all twirled down and come over here to the driver tab. Perfect. So you'll notice here that it named after the bone. So this is important to know. If you rename the bone, so let's name this eye control, it is going to break your driver. So if we switch back here and come here, you'll see that this is no longer working because the driver has been broken. So it doesn't update the driver. You can see now it's turned red. It realizes it's not working. So you just need to change this to the name of the bone, just something to keep in mind. Now we're gonna go ahead here and use a scripted expression. So we'll go ahead and change this there. And then we're going to set a custom variable here. So I'm gonna call mine i. Up here, we're going to enter i as our variable. And then if we come over here and switch, we'll see that things are still working. Perfect. So now let's go ahead and make this a little bit easier to use. What we can do in this expression is we can go ahead and times this by 10. So essentially what's happening now is that when we move down, you'll see that the eyes don't change until it hits negative one. And that's because it's returning a value of one and then offsetting as negative one. But first of all, we want this to be a positive number and also we want it to be a whole number. We don't wanna be dealing with all these in-between float values. And then lastly, what does to move a bit quicker? Otherwise we're going to have to move our bone all the way down there to scroll through all of our eye animations. So let's look at how we can do that. It's pretty simple with this script. First, what we're going to do is put this in parentheses and we're going to times the I value by 10. Now what this will do is that instead of every one meter, it will be every 0.1 meters 
as you see there, we'll begin scrolling through all of our I values for us. Perfect. Now what we want to do is go ahead and add an integer value. And we're going to start by shrinking this bone as well as it's a bit large there. Perfect. Now what we can do here is we are going to go back into our driver here and we're going to put int in the beginning. And what that will do is convert this to an integer so that we can be using those integer values. Lastly, we want to convert every number we have here into a positive number. You can see right now it's scrolling through kind of all the negative values and we want this to only be the positive values. So let's go ahead here, grab this again, and we're going to add an absolute function in front of this. So that's just ABS, put a parenthesis there and then a parenthesis here to close it. Now, when we play with our bone here, you'll see that it is changing every time and it's a positive frame. If we go ahead and grab this, we can see that we are moving forward. I'm just gonna grab this little pin here so this stays up. And you can see that as we move down, it is updating over here until it goes through all of our face values. Perfect. Now, well, the driver is based off of the custom location in the local space. So we can go ahead and move this around and it's not going to affect anything. So what we can do is go ahead, reset that with Alt G. And I'm just gonna go ahead and move this up here a bit so that the kind of animation is centered around our facial texture a bit. That way it's in this range. Now what we can do is come over here to the bone tab and we're going to make some adjustments here. Let's go to pose mode, grab our bone here and we only want it to move on the Y axis. So let's just go ahead and lock everything up. Now we can only move this up and down on the Y axis. Now let's also go ahead and limit our space so that we're not flying up and above and kind of hitting that missing texture realm. So what we can do is in pose mode, grab that bone, switch to bone constraint tab, add a bone constraint there. And we're gonna go ahead here and we're going to do a limit location. And then we are going to turn on the Y on both of these. Now I want my Y to go down. So we want the negative value here to go all the way to the last frame we have here. So around 0.7 there. And I'm gonna go ahead and just copy this number and set that as the minimum Y that can go. And I'm going to leave this at zero. And then now what we can see, and we'll click effect transform and set this to local space. And now you can see that we can only move our bone that much. Now you can go ahead and also go about making this a bit cleaner with controls. As I showed you here in the beginning example, I'll go ahead and show you one quick example. So what we can do here is add a plane. We'll take that plane in top view. We'll tab into edit mode. We'll go ahead, grab these top two, merge at center. Then we're gonna go ahead and just scale this down, apply rotation and scale. We'll switch back into edit mode here, face mode, grab that face, only delete the faces there by pressing X only face. And then we'll go back to this bone here, switch over to the bone tab, viewport display, custom object, go ahead, select that plane. And now you can see that we have an arrow and you can go ahead and play with the sizes here. So that's how you'd go about creating your custom bone shape. And then I just imported an image sequence here next to it and put some lines as kind of a just visual reference. So how would you go about attaching a rig like this to a character? Well, I've gone ahead and imported one of my characters. Now, I also want to take this time to announce that I am not only just giving away the face textures for free, but I am giving away this entire rig for free, which you can find in the description below. So I hope you find some fun use of that. Well, let's dive in about how to attach this to our characters. So let's go ahead here and we'll go ahead and move this forward. And we're going to get this in front of our character kind of as close as we can there with the plane. So I'm just gonna go ahead and move that there. Then I'm going to go ahead and kind of scale my face there. So great, that's about as large as I want the face on my character. I'm also gonna go ahead here over on the rig and maybe adjust this to be a little bit less creepy of a face. Great. Now what we can do is use a shrink wrap modifier on this to attach it to our character and we're also going to parent it. So let's look at how to do that. So what we're gonna do here is grab this object, come over here to the modifier tab and then you're going to add a shrink wrap and you're going to select your character. And at first it's gonna look a bit odd. And what you wanna do is take this offset and just 
barely drag it up and that will pop it above our character. If you want to avoid this casting shadows onto your object because it is slightly offset, you can come over here to the object properties and you can mess with the visibility here and just turn off shadows and then it will no longer cast shadows that are visible to the camera. The other thing you can do too is if you have a more detailed character, you can add a subdivision surface above this shrink wrap and that will help it uh, apply to your character a bit better. I recommend doing it on simple so that it doesn't distort as much. And then what you can do is grab this object, grab your character, and then parent that to your character. And then you can move your character around and you can go ahead and animate your rig as well.